fun math class was right after lunch and I was very bad at math and I was in ex excelling at everything else and also my math teacher was also my cheerleading coach and I used to have to leave math class because I would be doubled over in pain and I'd be in the bathroom and I'd have to get the hell out of there but I failed uh, grade 10 math three times. So math so was, was right after lunch. What, right were you after eating? lunch. what were you eating for I was lunch? eating chocolate milk and poutine and so mm. lots of gluten, lots of fat, lots dairy. of dairy, lots of cheese. Chocolate um, milk and poutine. Yeah, pretty much every day. Pretty damn tasty stuff. So but. we cleared that on Sunday and and what did you uh, notice when we do so this is so the question you want to ask is when these first when these symptoms first appear what was the content of my mind what was the conflict I was going through this is for those of you who want to see if there is an emotional connection between your food sensitivities and intolerances and you know stress Okay, like so there was stress. So what was your stress? My stress was that because I wasn't good at math, I would sit in math class and I would feel really stupid and ashamed. And because I was a straight A student and the and the overachiever in my family, I was really embarrassed and didn't know how to deal with that at all. And I, my body was creating a very intelligent way to get me the hell out of class. Yes, so realize this. First start off, instead of thinking your body is broken, mm -hmm. this is the mentality that a lot of people who are struggling with illness of any kind is this belief that my body is breaking down and it's broken. First start off with the understanding that it could be that your body is actually working for you to get you to look at certain parts of your life and open your heart to love. It sounds far-fetched, it sounds woo. I've been in practice as a chiropractor for 15 years so I know with certainty that if you, if you block out love, um, then you block out healing and so uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, so, what do we do? Well, well, on Sunday we went through that whole process and then we were actually going through it sitting outside of a coffee shop, not the restaurant that I have, and we grabbed a piece of banana bread and, and we and I ate half of it. And it was amazing. Like, I didn't really have any symptoms. Normally I would have... We waited for a couple of we hours. Waited, we said, let's wait. Yeah, let's wait. And, <clears throat> and I didn't overdo it. I had just a couple bites, maybe about a half a piece. Um, and normally I would have stomach pain right away and I would, my heart, the number one thing for me was, and this is so interesting because I was a nervous wreck in math class, like you have to imagine. And I was just dreading the moment that my teacher would ask me to answer a question. So my heart would be racing. And one of my biggest symptoms actually with the, when I would eat gluten specifically <clears throat> is my heart would start to race. Can you see an so, association there? Yeah. So I was looking and we were watching for that on Sunday and, and I wasn't having that situation. I didn't, my temperature didn't go up. I didn't start to feel like I was getting a headache. The symptoms I would normally have did not come right away. But you might be asking, how did we get there? And what we did was we looked at that scene mm -hmm. and those scenes in math class and her, her quote unquote stupid feelings as a gift. Yeah. And how did it serve you? How did all of that serve you? Well, at the time when I was in high school as a cheerleader, I was uh, in the band and I was straight Little A's. Little Miss Popular and Overachiever. So it, it certainly being stupid in math class and then getting sick and leaving really humbled me. And um, when you're that, if you're that age and I think if you think you can do anything, it's unrealistic. So I, I, it was a huge gift to me because I wanted to, be, I needed to be humble. I was very vain. I was very all about my looks and being intelligent in different areas and this was a huge gift that way. There was all, you know, another aspect of it was that the, my math teacher was actually my cheerleading coach. So there was intimidation, there was fear, there was a lot more emotionally going on than I would have ever realized. Um, and so then what did this journey lead you to? Creating an incredible business. Yeah. Which is ironic because... And intelligence. And intelligence, absolutely. So you now become an expert. Like people come to you as their leader. She's got a tribe of followers who are like looking up to her as their, you know, salvation and so if it wasn't for all of that I mean pay attention and I'm not saying this to insult anyone although some of you might get insulted by this because I had some negative feedback from the last uh, time that I had a, a, a chat on Periscope about this concept there were people were saying that I have a God complex that I think I can cure everything no 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 nutrition and and all of the journey that you're going through is very important yes but you can also be open to the fact that you can build an entire identity around this illness. Also, if you have problems saying no, sometimes your body will create a, a, a bad guy, an authority, a way out for you to be able to say no to certain foods when you can't do it yourself. So really start thinking of the benefits of this and how it's built an identity. She's built an entire identity. In fact, she was afraid to go through this process because who would I be without my gluten sensitivity? Who would I be without my food intolerances? 
does this does the whole foundation of my identity crumble? And it has. It's been a couple of days. It's been it's been three days ago, right? So you did notice that there was a slight reaction a couple of days later. Can you yeah. talk about that a little bit? A couple days after we had the banana bread on Sunday, I started feeling a little symptomatic, uh, just a little tired, a little bit, a little bit of digestive upset. But at the same time, for those last three days, when we when we worked together at first, I was only kind of able to really pinpoint back to high school. But I started having other memories and was able to identify sort of two more younger memories with food association. So your your reaction wasn't as strong? No, not at all. So you no, had a little bit of a... I didn't get a, a migraine, I didn't get... Brain the fog. Aches, the brain fog, I didn't get the aches and pains. So the sensitivity was reduced dramatically? Yeah, and even when we were sitting there, um, I, I, didn't, I wasn't gripped by fear having it in my hand. Like, there was actually a point, this is crazy, but there was a point where... I wouldn't walk in. I wouldn't even walk into a restaurant. Like I literally, out of fear of breathing it by accident, or 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 just someone making a mistake with my food. So the the fear I was most shocked by the amount, the level that my fear dropped on Sunday. You know, so yeah, give her give her some give her hands. some tap tap some hearts for that one. <laughs> like and share this. Crazy. Slide it towards the left side and share this with people who you know are dealing with food sensitivities and allergies. Um, Give her some love for that. There was no fear. And think about that relationship you have with food, the fear, the guilt, the shame, all of this stuff. Like, think about that prison. And so this goal, the goal here is not to make you make it okay for you to eat shitty foods all the time. It's to release you from the prison so that you can enjoy a meal with friends and not have to obsess over all the things on the menu and talk to the waiter. Because you your significant other without having to worry about getting sick. So yeah, you, you had to actually, you went there that night and you kissed yeah. your significant other. So I went home. Like? <laughs> it was crazy. She thought I was crazy. I went home and I thought, I'm going to just go home and take this further. I'm going to go home and I'm going to push myself to the limits and I'm going to just go home and I'm going to kiss my partner when I get there. Whereas normally I'd be like, hey, how was your day? Have you had any gluten today? You know, like there's like this preemptive whole process we would Which is through. totally romantic and yeah, spontaneous. Yeah, not at all. It's horrible. So she was actually shocked. She kind of like pulled away from it because she had had a sandwich or something. And um, and I was like, shh, don't say anything. And I grabbed her by the face and I gave her a big kiss and she was like, are you okay? Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm good. Like, so there was a minor little reaction so I was curious about that she reaches out to me and says I felt a little reaction and then memories of other shameful traumatic type of stuff yep. pertaining to food so what did she do she jumped in the car came to my office at Westgate Wellness Center and then what did we do today so then we worked through another memory I had which was um, I remember that growing up we used to have food delivered to our front door so we didn't have a lot of money when I was a kid and I, I resented and hated the And what food. kind of the food? What kind it of food? It was Chef Ware, you know, macaroni and cheese. Processed. Kraft dinner. Um, you know, I was I would go home and all I would have in the fridge to make lunch would be bologna, cheese, and white bread. So, so the question you want to ask yeah. is, and this is what I asked her, how did that make you feel? How did you feel when you were eating those foods? And then what we got was anger. Angry, ashamed. Shamed, ashamed embarrassed. Lack of, lack, of lack of options. Lack of options. Now, one of the things that she really prides herself now in her cafe, the living, uh, living, living, living cafe, is all of the like when I went on Sunday I was like bombarded with options yeah. it was like Holy and yet shit. it's totally gluten free it's like mind boggling right which yeah. your your mess becomes your message which is what what's happened and so we cleared those scenes that scene with the uh, with kind of the that one and then we not cleared, and then the other one with, so we worked on um, food bank and then we worked on just with having to come home for lunch be by myself with, again with limited options and then when you were a kid and then when I was really really young the force meeting. She was force fed. Yeah, as a so child. I was force fed, and I and this was a fuzzy memory for me, but I could I could just remember mostly the emotion of it, not necessarily the situation. But I remember that I would be force fed as an infant before I could even talk, and it was a very very stressful situation. Trauma um, is defined as anything distressing. So what's traumatic to you might not be traumatic to me, but if it's relatively traumatic to you and it's a subjective thing, it's trauma. Then it's trauma. So what we did was we cleared the, the emotions surrounding food. And then her heart opened. Yeah. What did you feel? Like we got it all on video, so we're gonna I do felt, a, we're gonna do a- uh, Like I was locked up in prison. I felt such relief and such gratitude for the whole thing. <laughs> um, still kind of overwhelming. But I felt, I actually, what was really interesting is I, <laughs> I felt my stomach release too. I felt my, my core change and shift and, and stress leave there, which would make sense because those were moments around food. My stomach would have been. Give her some love. Tap tap tap. <laughs> tip, tippity tap tap. So, 
give us some. So then what do we do? We're here in an <laughs> Indian restaurant. Yeah. So normally she, I won't go to I wouldn't go to a restaurant unless it's my own. I have to choose it. I have to call ahead, which, talk into the chef, making sure their kitchen is contained. I know all about like that. The whole thing. So they were like, we're going for lunch. And I had I brought my whole bag today of food. I was prepared not to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here we are at a restaurant, yes. first time in six years. That, I, that I've not decided the restaurant or had any role in any ordering order. or anything. I specifically <laughs> ordered garlic naan, which is full of gluten, mm -hmm. and butter chicken, which is in a cream sauce. So we got gluten chai. and dairy. Chai tea homemade with milk and sugar. Salad. And Salad. This, like you have to understand, for those of you that have experienced something like this before, you understand how even a salad like even the salad is terrifying because I don't know what's on the dressing. I don't the kitchen's have a bite. Cross contamination. Have brain. a bite. Now this is garlic naan and and this is a big deal. It's it's to me it's like whatever, mm -hmm. but to her, this is a big deal. And so, next time you see her on the periscope, don't be surprised if she's like 80 pounds heavier. She's, <laughs> she's gonna be gorgeous. You know? <laughs> it's really kind of wild and. You know, like like Dr. Anima said, we're not saying to go out. And I mean, as a, as an owner of a reputable business that caters to the celiac community, I'm not saying run out and eat some non like I'm doing. But but once in a blue moon, or or once you've done the emotional work. I mean, really consider that a lot of the food allergies and triggers can certainly be trauma related, and find a way, maybe working with Dr. Anima to work through it. Um, I've always known in my heart that that's been a huge part of it for me, and I worked for six years to build up my body to be strong enough to handle this type of situation. But don't lose hope if, if you've done everything you think you can and, and you still can't, you can't live the life that you live with food. Now we're, thank you. We're going to, I gotta get back to the office now. Um, but uh, if you wanna learn more, what we did is essentially, we took away, we went to those scenes and we dissolved their, her delusions about it. If you wanna know, there are seven primary delusions that we go through in traumatic events. Uh, relative to ourselves, expectations we have on ourselves and on other people, whether it's a father or a mother, that go against, when when that delusion, when that expectation goes against what reality, reality showed, we experience stress and trauma. So if you're interested in knowing, go to theoverviewmethod.com slash stress. And then when you enter your email, you're going to actually get a 20 minute video of me in, in the overview experience dis discussing the seven primarily primary delusions. So what you're gonna do is write down the stresses going on in your life, and after you watch the video, you will realize it's based on one of those delusions. So I look forward to, uh, to crossing paths with you. Please uh, add me to Facebook, uh, Dr. Nima. Feel free, uh, you know, ask me any question. If you wanna have a consultation, I'd be happy to chat with you and see if this is right for you. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of hope that one day, uh, the, the possibility that you're now eating healthy, you're doing all the nutrition, and at, at, as you've reached this plateau, you've gone to the next level where you're no longer a prisoner of, of, of the foods, uh, to, to foods and restaurants, that you're able to eat what you love and uh, spend time with who you want to and not have to feel like a like embarrassed or shamed or outcasted or feel like you're diseased or disordered. It's possible if the cause is tied in, if we can connect that cause to an emotional trigger. So this has been great. Give me some love right there. Tap that screen and I look forward to catching you on the flip side. Thank you so much, Amanda. Is Thank there you. anything you want to say to these guys before? What's your last oh my gosh. Big, big, big transformation for you? You are not what you eat. You are not what you eat, absolutely. You're not what you eat. You are not what you eat. Anything is transcendable. This is this is mind-boggling and fantastic. Yeah. You are how you felt. Say that again. You are how you felt. When you ate. When you ate. Wow. I mean, of course, what you eat matters. Yeah. This is coming from a... It absolutely matters. It's, it's balance. It's about balance. It's about balance. You have to do the nutrition. You have to do it. Chiropractic is amazing as well to loop. And you have to want it. And you have to I want. I wanted this. Like there this you go. is not. I, you have to want. You have to want to no longer be identified as a celiac or IBS or whatever. You have to That's want. Big. That's a big deal. To transform it. That's a huge part of it. Otherwise, you'll hit blocks, and you, you have to really want it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to connecting with you.